Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. So a bunch of people wanted me to string again. Um, I didn't think this video or this channel would be about me stringing. That was not my intention. But since people want me to string, um, I'm going to do it. So the last time I did a stringing video, people were like, uh, I kept saying, actually, well, you know, you know, you know this right well a lot of them actually didn't know so I'm guessing I have people that are starting to string versus you know intermediate to pro level stringers watching me so this video is gonna be for those people who are on this side uh, kind of learning the string uh, need me to take it a little slower for them so I'm gonna string this racket which is a Pro Staff, Wilson Pro Staff 97 uh, CV, okay, with a 16 by 19 string pattern. Okay, I'm gonna do it two piece, right, which means two pieces of string. If you have one string, cut it in half so you get 20 feet per side, okay? Now, I'm gonna put it on the machine first, okay? So the way I do it, you see that W right there, right? It faces upwards, right? We, because it's a Wilson, we want a W. We don't want an M, okay? It really doesn't matter, but that's just what I'm used to doing, okay? If you want to put an M, be my guest, put an M, okay? But I'm just going to do it how I do it, and you can either follow or not, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm doing W. Okay, so lining it up. Make sure you are in the center at the throat, right? Make sure you are at the center at the top. Okay, by the way, this is called H for head, T for throat, okay? If you got one of those US RSA magazines uh, with all the stringing patterns in there, right? H means head, T means throat, okay? T does not mean top, okay? Just to let you know, okay? So it's T and H, head, throat. All right, so make sure these two are tight first, 12 o'clock, six o'clock, tight, okay? And then if you have a six point mount uh, stringer, make sure the braces are on tight, okay? So just tight, 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 just so the racket can't move, okay? See the machine moving, but the racket's not moving. We don't want the racket to move. Like we don't want too much movement. Like I can't move it right now. All right, so finger tight, finger tight, okay? Just like don't over crank it, but just tight where you can't move it, move it easily, okay? All right, now let's begin. We set the tension, okay? I know a lot of people are in a rush to do these things. They start stringing the racket and forget that, you know, it's probably not at the right tension. So make sure you set the tension, okay? This one needs to be strung at 52. I'm putting it at 52, okay? Don't skip this step, because if you've been string, you might string this record at 60 and then you get halfway done and you're like, oh crap, I gotta start over again, all right? So don't forget in between rackets to check the tension. All right, so I'm gonna get the string. We're using Selenko Confidential 16 light on this one. Now I'm gonna pull it off a reel. So, so I know there is 16 mains here, okay? We can even count it. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight on one side, eight on the other. I like to do it this way. 
There are other ways to measure out the main, like, you know, doing this deal, but I like to just measure it off the racket. It's just what I've been doing. There are different ways to do it. You can figure out which way you like, but this is how I like to pull it off the frame. All right, so watch this, watch this. So I take the tip of the strings and I measure it from outer, outer edge of the frame to outer edge of the frame. So that's one main, okay? I do the same thing with the second main, the third main, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's one side. I do it again. One from the outside to the outside, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? Now, I take that and maybe add one more inch and I cut it like so, okay? I've never been short doing it this way. So, and I, you know, hopefully never wasted too much string doing it this way too. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead of you already. Okay, so looking at the holes here, there's six holes here total in the throat area, okay? So what we wanna do is find the middle two. And that's easy because this is in between, this uh, brace is in between the middle two. And so is this brace, right? So because there's six here, that means that the strings are gonna come out this way. The two strings come out this way, okay? If there were eight of those, if there were eight holes here, four sets of two, they would go out down this way and the strings would be this way, okay? That's how it would start. But because this has six, it's gonna go up this way. Let me show you. So I start with the middle on the one side, right there, and then I go down to the one that matches right there. Okay, and I pull some of that, and then I go to the next hole there, right? So this is my center point here. I'm just going around that. All right, therefore it comes out this way, and then kind of around this, right? Going out this way. So what I do now is called 50-50. I want 50% of the string this side of the racket, the other half that side of the racket. How do I do that? I find the two tips, right? And I hold the two tips and then I go like this, right? And then I 50-50, okay? So now I have half and half. So. The other thing I do now is I get my clamps ready. So clamp number one, right, is gonna be this clamp that's farther from me. We're gonna go here as close as we can to the frame and clamp it down. And then we're gonna clamp the base clamp down, okay? If you don't have these and you just have like this clamp and this uh, kind of just stays put, then just clamp it as close to the frame as possible, okay? Make sure it's tight, but not overly tight, okay? So I'm just going to teach the basics right now. If you want to see an advanced video, watch my Yonex one, okay? So we're just going to do basics right now. Now... I'm gonna start the main now. Okay, so with this clamped in, I'm gonna line it up so it's straight with the, with the grommet, all right? So it's all straight. Okay, I'm gonna hold it here. I'm gonna use the Diablo, right? And pull the first main. Checking on this the whole time, okay? Okay, that's perfect. It didn't move too much and it didn't slide. The only thing we're worried about is this sliding, it, which means this isn't tight enough. So that was perfect, it didn't slide. All right, so we clamp here, 
okay? So, all right, we just clamped it. Now we can let it go. And then we move on to the next one. So you go to the next hole and you move this way down, right? And you, if you have one of these machines, don't go over this frame, go under the frame, okay? All right, pull tension and go. All right, clamp as close to the frame as possible. All right, let it go. Okay. Now, if you have a Diablo, this is that's what this this is called right here, the circle thing. Uh, you can choose to use it or not. Right. I found that if you use it it strings it a little tighter or it feels a little tighter. If you go straight for the head without wrapping it around this, it'll feel a little looser, probably about three pounds from my own experience. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna choose one way or another, just choose it, but do it consistently. If you're never gonna use it, don't use it. If you're always, if you're gonna use it, always use it, okay? So on to the next main. Right, so I'm about three. I'm about done with three of them. I'm just gonna prepare my fourth one, right? But I'm gonna leave that. So this is a very key step right here. All right, we have this, and I call this the anchor. It's anchoring these three mains, right? So it's time for me to move to this side now to do some mains on that side. So I'm. I'm gonna pull this main, because don't forget to pull this main. It needs to be pulled. It's the one that's holding these strings um, tensions, right? So I just pulled this main, it has tension now. All I'm doing is moving it to this side now because this is where the tension is, okay? And then now I'm gonna do the other side. Then I'm gonna do the next few mains. Okay. So I'm gonna do a few more now and then go back to the other side. Okay, next major step here. What are you going to skip? Every racket has a pattern, okay? We know that this is a skip number seven hole and a number nine hole. So it's one, so he's counting from the middle here. On the other side of this uh, post, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's number seven. We're skipping number seven right there. The same with the top. We're skipping number seven right there, okay? Which means we gotta go into number eight. Number eight is right there, okay? So we're going into number eight. And then we're, go we're skipping number nine Right, going into number 10, same with the top. Okay, in some of these frames, in some of these frames, 
there's a skip two on the top and a skip one on the bottom or a skip two on the bottom and a skip one on the top. So it just depends. You, you kind of have to, you know, look at the book or uh, find some kind of directions that'll tell you. So now I'm going back to the other side. So again, I skip number seven to go to number eight. Now I'm gonna skip number nine to go to number 10. Okay. I'm short here to the head. Definitely long enough to tie a knot though. So what we're gonna use is one of these. Um, it's called an extender or a starting clamp. Uh, they kind of work for both. A great tool to have. Um, every stringer should have one of these. Now, how to use it is you get one string that's maybe, how many feet is that? Maybe three feet long. Um, you get one of the strings and you come around through the holes and then you swing it back around this way through the other set of holes. So it's 50-50 here, right? And then you tie a knot there. Right, this will help you extend from this string to that head. So, um, before I do these last two mains, we want to jack this up. I like to jack it up about three to five pounds. Um, you know, usually they say about 10%, but that's a little too much in these days, depending on what kind of machine you have. I know this thing, this machine will, will pull pretty tight. So, I, I only like to do three pounds. If you have a crank machine, maybe five pounds on it. So, but at least three pounds. So I'm gonna jack it up three pounds. Um, the reason I do that is because it's gonna lose some tension uh, on the knot. So I'm just kinda, kinda you know, taking that into account. So the other side, I've already jacked it up three pounds. I'm not using that, uh, that uh, knot feature. So it's gonna leave it at up three pounds. All right, so I'm essentially done with the mains. Now it's time to uh, tie it off. So you can either tie it off there, right? So it needs to be one of these strings that you tie it off at, or you could tie it off there. We, we don't, we can tie it off here, right? But then you're gonna be covering these two holes when you get down to the crosses, right? So we don't want that. We wanna tie it off up here, so we only cover one. So it makes it easier to get into that one. You'll know what I mean. We'll talk about it when we do our crosses. All right, so I need to get in here right now. Okay. It's a little tight getting in there right now, but I'm gonna use this. See, there's a tip right there, right? Then I'm gonna see if I could wiggle in through. Okay, so that goes right in, just like that, okay? Now that I got the, the, the final part of the main in to the hole I need to get it into here, right? We're gonna do a two half hitch knot, okay? So I learned on this two half hitch knot and it's much more simple than some of the other knots out there, okay? So I know there's a pro knot, a Parnell knot, but I, just to keep it simple, we're just gonna do a two half hitch knot. This is how we do this, okay? So now that we just came through this hole, so I'm gonna actually show you again. We're gonna find this hole right here, 
right? So there has to be a string that comes out of it, like, and it has to be big enough for this string to come through, right? We're gonna go right through there, all right? We need to tie, so try not to have too much slack here, okay? Not too much slack here, okay? So the first half hitch, right? We gotta go around this one right here, okay? Like this, right? We're gonna take the hand, other hand and go underneath, and we're gonna go back around this one on the other side, right? And then we're gonna find the loop here and come through it, okay? I'm gonna do it again. So, since we're on this side, we came out on the right side, my right, your left, we're gonna go around this, the string, this string here, right? We're gonna push it through on the other side. There's a loop here now, right? We're gonna go through the loop, okay? Like that. That's your first half hitch. You see there's slack here, right? And this is loose here. Slack here, loose here right now, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, take this tool, right, our starter clamp, and and go like this, right? So that we can get a nice grasp of it. We're gonna pull it straight up and towards me. We're gonna actually tension, like tension, and go away, up and towards me, okay? Okay, perfect, like that. And then for our second half hitch, we're gonna do exactly the same thing. We're gonna go over this string, under it, over and under it, back up on the other side, through this little loop that we made, through, okay? Now, if you don't have one of these tools, if you don't have one of these tools, use, use a plier. If you have a plier like this, Use a plier, maybe use a thicker plier though, um, and just get a nice grasp of it, right? Towards me, up, away, towards me, right? There's your second knot right there, okay? And then I'm gonna cut some of it off, like maybe leave about quarter to an eighth of an inch right there. Okay, we're gonna do it again on the other side now. Okay, we find the same hole, right, as we did there. All right, we push it through, all right. See how we came out on the left side, okay? Which means we're gonna, we're gonna come around this one on the right side, your left, okay? But as long as you go around this string, you'll be okay, the same string you are sharing that hole with. So, okay, you ready? So we're gonna go around it, right? Under it, we made this loop now, we're gonna go through it, like that, okay? Now, I'm gonna use this again here, since I have one of these. We're gonna go towards me, or, you know, towards the racket, let's say, like, right, to tighten, towards the racket, to tighten, up, away, up, towards me, okay, so again, we're going to do it again, we're going to go around it again, under, through the loop, okay, this time I'm going to take this, pulling towards, towards me, right, and then I'm going to go up and away, with tension and then back towards me, okay? The second knot isn't as important as the first one. The second knot is basically um, kind of insurance for just in case the first knot slips. I would say 99% of the time you do that first knot right, it won't slip. The second knot is just good to be there. All right, so I'm gonna cut right there. And that's it for the mains for now, okay? So we're gonna let this go. 
Okay, we're gonna start on the cross. All right, thanks for watching Tennis Spin, uh, where we put our spin on your tennis. Crosses aren't on the next video, okay? This was the mains. Thank you.